Hello, hello. Welcome to this episode of The Creative Pause. My name is Susan Padron, and I'm here with my co-host, who I'll allow to introduce herself. Hello, everybody. It's so good to be with you today. I'm Stacey Fay. We hope this episode and, and each one that we offer uh, brings you a time of joy or respite or just a, you know, a little bit of a breather in your day as you're um, getting through this you know, craziness of the pandemic that we're in. Um, and if this happens to air after we've kind of gotten back a little bit to quote unquote normal life, um, I imagine that that's gonna have its stressors too. So <laughs> we hope that this brings you a sense of joy amidst that. Um, we're very excited today to have Lauren Lopez of Philicarta with us to talk about postcards, but we'll get to a formal introduction in a moment. Um, before we do that, we always start out the show by asking, how you're doing and I share, Susan shares and Lauren will also share a few words. Um, we do this just to keep the show genuine and real and to acknowledge that we all have feelings, you know, to talk about at this time and pretty much any time in our lives. So um, yeah, so take a moment just to think about that at home, write it down or say it aloud and um, whatever way is gonna be useful to check in with yourself. So, how am I doing? Um, so as I said, this is a pre-recorded episode. So uh, I am currently pregnant in this episode and my body's feeling different today as of this afternoon. So different as in I think like labor's coming. Um, <laughs> so, so that's interesting. I'm trying to like, you know, part of me is like, no, I'm not ready. Like, don't come yet. And then part of me is like, well, all right. She's, you know, she's clearly giving me signals that she's probably gonna be arriving soon. So, um, yeah, so a mix of all those emotions, fear, excitement, uh, worry, anticipation, all of it. Um, so that's where I'm firmly at right now. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully we get through this episode with no contractions or anything like that. Um, I guess you'll know if I suddenly disappear off screen. But <laughs> um, in any case, yeah, send all the good vibes my way. If I already have my baby, you can still send all the good vibes because I'll need them. Um, so anyway, Susan, how are you doing today? <laughs> Uh, pretty tame, I think, by comparison. Um, no baby or labor or anything over here. Not pregnant, so. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm doing all right, you know. Uh, excited for you, Stacey, now that we're, like, getting down to the wire. Um, but for myself, yeah, I think I'm doing okay. Today was kind of like a normal ish day so um I took some time for myself to like do some fun creative things that really helped to just be like more there for myself and I really appreciated that I really enjoyed it enjoyed just like taking that little bit of time um you know like stepping away from all of the like mom and household responsibilities for a few minutes here and there and um yeah just taking care of myself a little bit. So it felt good. So I feel like I'm in a, a pretty good space right now. Um, Lauren, how are you doing? I'm doing better than I was this morning. Uh, I have five children and three of them are doing online school. And the other two youngest are doing their best to make sure no one gets any online school done. So that's been like a an adventure like um so it's been really stressful uh to do schooling on the best of days and then on the worst of days it's just like chaos <laughs> like, um but but so i did have a, a rough school morning where i got frustrated um but uh but now i'm i'm, in, I'm glad to be here talking to you guys so it's a welcome distraction well, good. We're happy to have you. Um, and we're happy to provide a little bit of quiet and, you know, <laughs> distractions too. Um, I feel like that's a, a gift that Stacey and I have been able to give quite a few of our guests who are moms is just a little bit of quiet, a little bit of time for them, just like we're providing for anybody who's watching the videos or who's, who's listening. So I now get the pleasure of highlighting the quote that you shared with us, Lauren. So I'm gonna share my screen. And the quote says, every day will not be good, but there will be good in every day. And Lauren, would you mind sharing with us why you decided to choose this quote? So this quote, um, someone had shared, like a Facebook friend had shared it, I think 
maybe five or so years ago and I had really liked it and I um I hand lettered something and took a picture of it and I was going back in time on my Instagram feed just recently in the last like week or two and I saw this and I was like oh man that's such a good one <laughs> like that's a good quote for now because it is like a weird stressful time um but there's like I've been like kind of like challenging myself to like look at the positive parts of um being you know staying home and having my kids all here and stuff because there is a lot of positives um like my husband's not uh working five days a week anymore he's just working three days like with some reduced hours so it's been nice to have him home and um I don't know. So there's definitely been some good things we've been cooking a lot more i've been going on more walks um so yeah That's yeah, one thing thanks for sharing that. I feel like that it's similar. We've heard that from a lot of guests and, and people on the show of just, you know, a lot of days actually can feel really heavy and maybe not so good, but there's, there's little snippets of um, good that, that weave themselves all throughout the day if you allow yourself to pay attention to them and, and appreciate them. Well, thank you, Lauren, for sharing that. Um, I'm very excited today to have Lauren with us. She is a very old friend. Lauren, you're like one of my oldest friends, actually, I think. <laughs> um, because we went to grade school together and all the way up through high school. Um, and I have very few friends, actually, from high school. And Lauren's one of them. And um, we've stayed connected all this time. And Lauren's a brilliant artist. She does beautiful work across the board with everything she touches. And she's done everything in the past from cards and murals and um, stationary and design work for for bands and their posters um, and that sort of thing all the way through a lot of her focus lately which is Phila Carta um, and we'll share information about Phila Carta um, on this episode page. Phila Carta really focuses uh, Lauren's sort of design talent and uh, research capabilities too because Lauren like Lauren just has this font of history in her head and wisdom um, around postcards and pieces that are very specific to Philadelphia history and also South Jersey history um, and traditions. And so, um, you know, for instance, she recently released a Ben Franklin postcard, which she did. And um, a lot of her postcards are also in stores in Philadelphia. So you'll find her in a lot of the museum stores throughout the city and in Reading Terminal Market as well. So um, yeah, so she does beautiful work, and again, she kind of marries the the element of design and drawing with the history and research of um, people like Ben Franklin or uh, traditions around food or or that sort of thing. Um, so she does really great stuff, and we're really excited to have her here today because, uh, given Lauren's experience with postcards and with all of her designing of postcards, she's going to talk with us about the importance of that and some of the joy it can bring to our lives right now and, and even beyond um, this time we find ourselves in. And she's also gonna walk through some pretty interesting sort of things we can connect into around postcard making. So Lauren, we're so excited to have you and you can take it away. Well, thank you, Stacy. Can I hire you to write, write my bio on my website? Cause that was really good. <laughs> Just <laughs> um, I wish I could speak it that way about myself. I'd be in a, <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so I'm, um, as Stacy mentioned, I'm talking about postcards today and you might say like, why postcards? Uh, well, postcards are the easiest way to brighten someone's day and, um, Everyone loves mail. It's a fun surprise, especially right now to get um, because everybody's at home and their activities are limited. So when you send something through the mail now, um, it's better than it's ever been. Maybe since like, you know, 1840s when <laughs> you would wait like four months for like that letter to come across the ocean or whatever. Um, but anyway, I've been sending postcards most of my adult life and I'm mystery years old, but uh, it's been since about 2000 <laughs> that I've been sending them. Um, but I will say that the postcards that I sent in the last month, because um, usually when I send postcards, I don't really get a response and I'm not really expecting to get a response um, for most of the time that I send them. But the postcards I've sent in the last month and I've sent up about 50, I have gotten so many like thank you texts and emails and messages on Instagram, like thank you so much. So now especially 
more than ever, mail is really treasured. Um, so, um, like I said, um, postcards are the easiest and cheapest way to send something through the mail. You don't need an envelope. Uh, all you need is a single piece of paper and a stamp. And uh, that's pretty much it. They're um, very low tech. Um, so uh, who you can send postcards to, obviously your friends and family would really love to uh, hear from you right now. Um, but you can also send postcards to strangers, um, which might seem odd. Um, but you can, um, if you're interested, you know, postcards are, uh, I guess like a lot of people um, connect them with like travel. Um, so I recently found this really amazing site called Post Crossing, which is a postcard exchange program. It's free to participate and it connects you with 210 countries throughout the world, other people that also want to exchange postcards. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and just show it to you really quickly. If, um, so here's the Post Crossing site. Um, it's just postcrossing.com. You can just do a search for it. Oops, sorry. And the way that it works is you're going to register, if you want to do this, um, register for a free account, and then you'll get, um, you'll put in your address, but you won't um, get any postcards yet because you have to send postcards first before you can receive them. But how it works is that there's, you can see the numbers down here, there's almost 800,000 members throughout 210 countries. And this project's been going on for um, about 15 years or so. So in that time, they've uh, 56, over 56 million postcards <laughs> have been uh, received. So it's legit, like you don't have to worry about it not, um, like it's a legit site. So anyway, um, so you'll register for an account and then it'll give you, you can send up to five postcards at once and then it'll just give you some address, random people's addresses from all over the world. So you might get people from the US. I've also sent postcards to Germany, Taiwan, Russia, Ireland, um, like another cut. It's just whoever's participating. So I just think like, especially now, it's like a really fun activity um, to do. Um, and it's a really cool way to see like postcards, different postcards throughout the world in different countries. And um, so if you decide to do this, uh, you'll be able to see uh, when you get someone's address, you'll be able to see their uh, profile and people's profiles. I'll show you, I think I can show you mine. Um, but in their profile, they're just write like a little bit about themselves and they'll sometimes ask for specific cards. Um, you don't have to, like it says in the rules, like you, you can't request only certain cards. Like it's really up to the person sending you um, if they want to, you know, honor your request. But one of the things that a lot of people ask for is uh, locally um, themed cards because, you know, this is people from all over the world and they want to see where you live and what it looks like there. But uh, I've also gotten, I've gotten, so I've sent like seven. Oh, so how it works is like you'll send out five cards first. And every time that your card reaches somebody, um, it'll have like you write it, they give you a, a code number to put on it, like a US, like it'll have like a eight digit code. And then the person who receives it gets the code, they go to the website, put in the code, and it'll mark down that your postcard was received. Once a postcard is received, then your address will come up for a random person to send you a card. So that's how you get the cards in return. So it's sort of like, um, there's like a whole system to make sure that you're compensated for the ones that you're sending out. Um, let me share. Okay, do you have any questions? I just think that's pretty amazing. I think it's really fun to think about getting postcards from like random <laughs> people that are out there. You've obviously sent some, what has been the most fun postcard that you've um, received? So I've only gotten, I just joined in the beginning of April. I just found out about it, um, this site in April. So it, it does take some time to get cards from other countries because, you know, it's like the, especially now, like some of the mailing stuff is slower. Um, but um, I've, I've gotten two cards back. I'm waiting, I should have checked the mail before I came here because I'm waiting every day. I'm sure I'm gonna get one now because I've sent seven so far. And so I know I have some more coming to me. 
Um, but the only two that I got were from the U.S. just because the time elapsed. So, but um, so like cards going, like one card that I sent to Germany got there in 11 days. Um, the and then Taiwan for some reason was also pretty fast. But so far, like I sent a card to Ireland like over a month ago, probably like 30 something days, and it hasn't gotten there yet, or the person hasn't registered it yet. So it is like, you need some patience. Like it, it takes some time to get postcards back, but, but, oh, and once you send more, like once uh, I'm a new member, so I can only send five at once, but like once I've been doing it for a while, you can send like 20 at once. So then you start getting like tons of postcards back. Like the, like the um, number one person on there has sent almost 30,000 postcards, like, and gotten 30,000 <laughs> postcards. Like that's just crazy. <laughs> a lot of postcards <laughs> um that's awesome and you and you were saying lauren um to us sort of off video that you can also do this with kids right it's a good activity to do with your children yeah i, I think it would be really fun especially you know a little bit older kids that can write um uh you know write a couple sentences about themselves um so yeah definitely for i would say probably like you know starting in like fourth grade up to high school you know like a really great activity and then like learn about you know different countries and in the world that's awesome um susan any questions that you have about the program i know lauren's going to jump into some other things too but before we move on no i'm just enjoying hearing about it i'm like fascinated yeah. it's like it's such a cool idea a cool concept and, and an easy way to just bring a little bit of happiness to someone's day, you know, like a nice little surprise, like something to look forward to that has such a low cost, but like, you know, just yeah. um, potential for a nice little happy impact. I like it. So I guess um, now I can switch to making your own postcard. I have a little demo set up. Um, there's not much to postcards, I have to say. It's not very technical. Uh, everyone can do it. It's really just a single piece of paper, but um, there's a couple uh, size rules and stuff. So I'm going to um, switch to my other camera. So here we go. Yeah, as Lauren's switching there, I love the element of, uh, I'm one of those people that's obsessed with getting mail. <laughs> and and in, in our day and age, I feel like you don't actually get like meaningful mail that much, you know, every so often you get a card or something, but so it's it's pretty exciting to think about getting a postcard, especially from some part of the world, maybe you've never been and kind of virtually travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a couple friends that are so good about sending handwritten notes and letters, like either, you know, thank you cards or just because, and um, I'm not good with that. <laughs> I would I would like to be because I love receiving it. And it's such a nice, happy little, like tangible thing to just take the time and enjoy. Um, so I don't know, maybe in postcards will feel more accessible to me and <laughs> something that I can participate in too. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you crystal clear. Okay, great. So here um, is some of the postcards that I make, um, that I've made and sell um, with Villa Carta. Um, but when it comes so, so postcards, and we think probably the most common postcards you're going to see are like these travel sort of postcards right here. Um, this is actually a postcard I got from Post Crossing. This was my first one that I got. It's, um, as you can see, like... I love all those stickers. I'm like, yeah, I so, yeah, people awesome. like to decorate. Here's another one that I got. My son kind of destroyed this one. But yeah, some people like to decorate um, with stickers. And... There's also, I'll, I'll talk about it later, there's um, a lot of people uh, will uh, use vintage stamps um, because stamps, U.S. postage stamps never expire. Um, so you can use ones from like, I'll, sh I'll show you some, they're really cool, like really fun, like vintage stamps. And they're not very expensive either. Like um, they're, they're a little bit more than regular postage, but like a stamp is like, you know, 30 cents. So like, it might be like a dollar instead of 30 cents. It's still not a big, um, big deal. But um, okay, so 
just to give you, oh, to show you some, I didn't show the other side. Here's just like some examples of cards. I showed you these ones. This, this one's just like a pattern um, card. Sorry, I got damaged, but here is a really cool card that um, one of my friends sent to me, actually someone from Instagram that I traded postcards with. And this is, she made this really nice letterpress print um, and she used vintage stamps. Um, on the back, which is really cool. These stamps are really nice. So, so here's some types of postcards that you can send. Um, of course, you could use a travel postcard if you, you know, have some like in your house or when the quarantine is over and want to go out shopping. They're really easy to find if you live in a big city. Um, any rest stop too. But here's some other ideas that you can do is pictures um, make really easy and fun postcards to send and if you're of a certain age you might remember this is like my baby picture but oh my gosh and the raggedy ann doll yep <laughs> <laughs> I know, raggedy ann. yeah but um first like i don't know how long this was but uh photos used to come with like already like a setup like hey send this photo through the mail um in the 80s probably i don't know when they stopped doing that but so you can definitely use a photo if you have like old photos or photos that you've printed. Here's like another idea. You could just use some fun um, pattern paper. Um, this is just scrapbook paper. It's like really pretty. And another idea is if you are artistic or you feel confident, you don't really, it doesn't take like too much, but um, uh, this is my daughter's drawing actually. And we're, we're working on a, um, project right now where she's going to make a series of these like little mandala drawings um so kids art is a really cool thing to make um postcards out of and i'm just gonna so these are just everything is on just like regular paper uh, oh let me talk about the size first so so postcard size according to the u.s postal service is four by six inches it has to be four by six inches. Um, it has to be three and a half by five to four by six inches because if it's smaller than this size, this three and a half by five, it's too small. It might get lost in the sorting machines and stuff. So it has to be at least three and a half by five inches. And if it's bigger than four by six, it can definitely be bigger. I make, my postcards that I make are five by seven. So they're a little bit bigger. The only difference is that you can't use a postcard stamp on the anything bigger than four by six inches. You have to use a regular first class stamp. And um, the difference, like postcard stamps are 35 cents and regular um, stamps are 55 cents. So it's really not that it's 20 cents difference. It's not like a big deal. Um, but, and also postcard stamps, the, uh, the postal service only has one stamp design. Uh, for postcard stamps where regular stamps, like the first class stamps, there's so many cool ones, like really nice. Um, and the post office will, like you can go on the post office website and order stamps and they mail them to you uh, for free. And it takes it like about a week. So like, here's like the regular ones. This is, I don't have a ton right now, but this is one I got last summer for Woodstock. Um, and they have really, they have great ones. They, the post office like has really fun stamps. Um, all the time. And this is an international stamp. Uh, these are a little bit more expensive. These are $1.20. Um, regular stamps are 55 cents. And these, if you do post crossing, you're going to want to get some international stamps because you might get some domestic addresses to send to, but the majority are going to be different countries. So you just need to get one of these stamps. Uh, they're $1.20 each. I just bought a book of Tennessee. I've used most of them. And then also we were talking about vintage stamps and these vintage stamps, some of them are not from the U.S. so you can't use <laughs> These are actually my grandma's stamp collection I found so I had some from her but if you can get, you can buy vintage U.S. stamps on Etsy and eBay and they're pretty cheap like I was saying earlier and you can definitely use vintage stamps. The only thing that you need to be mindful of is vintage stamps are for like much less um, postage usually. So 
you need to make it to 35 or 55 cents. Um, and if you are using six cent stamps, like your whole postcard is going to be covered with stamps. So you're going to try to get some like higher volume ones, like at least like a 20 cent or something stamp, but that's really, these are really cool. This is like, if you want to do next level of postcard sending, get some vintage stamps, um, order some vintage stamps on eBay or Etsy. Okay. So now I'm going to do making a postcard and there's really, you know, there's not too much to it. The only thing I think I mentioned the size. So you, if you are going to keep it four by six, um, you can use a post, uh, postcard stamp. And if it's bigger, you just need a bigger stamp. You also need to make it rectangular. You can't have a square because the post office hates square stuff and it will jam in the machines and also they will charge you extra postage. So whatever you do, just don't make a square. And you can actually make um, a sheet. You can make your post um, card anywhere from, remember we said that th this is three and a half by five, that's the small size, up until 11 by six inches. And 11 by six inches is about this size. So that's a pretty big postcard. <laughs> Yeah, it's giant. But if, <laughs> yeah, if you want to make a statement, <laughs> you can send, and that, that you would just need a, a regular first class stamp for that. But anyway, so um, just really simple. There's no reason why you can't send, like, this is just a drawing on regular paper, but I prefer to make my um, postcards a little bit thicker. So if you have, um, like, and also photos, they usually have like a glossy sort of um, back to them, which is not very good to write on. So if you're using a photo or if you're using a drawing that's just on regular paper, it's nice to make it a little bigger. So here you just take like, I want to use this drawing and I'm just going to make it a postcard size. So here's a four by six postcard and we're just going to make it um, the right size. I love the idea of using your kids' artwork. Um, yeah, I, I forgot to have it here, but I had like a lot of like, you know, like, like the paintings like that my first grader made in school. It was like a really cool abstract painting and it's, you know, it's on a bigger piece of paper. Well, I could make it into four or five postcards. I would just cut out like a bunch of, it'd be really cool for like toddler paintings too, like your son, Stacy. He has any yeah. like finger painting. You yeah, well, and, and also like the element of it too of right right now and even after this time of the pandemic, like you know, grandparents can't see their grandkids and you know, there's there's ways that people are separated and this kind of thing would be so special to get in the mail. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Exactly what I was yeah, especially. yeah. So um so here's a four by six piece of paper, and this is one I already cut out. And if you just glue two pieces of paper together, it'll make it a little bit thicker so that it, you know, it won't get, it'll go through the mail a little bit easier. And this is just a glue stick. You just want to use like any glue that's not like that your card will stay stuck to. Like you don't want it to come up unstuck while it's traveling. And these are, these two pieces of paper are pretty thin, but you can use, you know, cardstock. You can even, I have some watercolor paper that um, my kids made some drawings on. Like that's plenty thick enough um, to, uh, to mail as is. So, well, I mean, this is a little, I was just doing this fast. So I probably would have made it a little bit nicer or cleaned up the edges. But so for the other side, like you'll see, here's a sample postcard. Um, that they will often put like kind of like a line here and then like an address line. Well, you don't have to do any of that. <laughs> There's no reason why you have to have any of that. Like all you need is writing the address in the right quadrant. And the only thing is that the post office prints a barcode. You can't really see it on the top oh, here. This one you can see, they, they print a barcode on like anything that goes through the mail. So if you want to, you can just kind of like mentally make a space or even just draw it out that whatever you write in here is going to get covered with a barcode. So you can like kind of leave it blank or whatever. And if you want, I mean, if you want to do that line and I like to write like, 
I'd like to make it look like it's from a company. So like <laughs> the Mandala series. You know, you can write something on there. You can definitely do this on your computer. Um, if you know how to print double-sided stuff on your computer. Um, and yeah, you would just put a stamp on that and the address. I don't know what else, am I, am I missing any steps? <laughs> uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> no, I think that's great. Um, and, and what you people should know is Lauren says the best postcards ever. So it's like, she's, <laughs> she's always coming up with something creative to, to write on the back of them. Most times they're really funny actually, which I appreciate. It's like a little bit of humor coming in the mail, um, but also meaningful ones. So I think, you know, Lauren, any tips for, um, content people could write about, like, especially in the post-crossing program, like, did you, based on what you've received or what you've written, um, you know, is there any, like, are any tips or ideas on, on content people could put in the postcards? Um, some people will ask in their profile, like, on their post-crossing profile, they'll say, tell me about, like, one of the more interesting ones I saw was, like, tell me something that's really bothering you right now. <laughs> um, one asked, like, what is your life like right now during quarantine? Um, some, some people ask, like, what's your favorite movie? Or, uh, you know, like, what do you, people kind of say, like, what they like to do for fun. Like, a lot of the, like, I've only gotten two back, but they both sort of said, like, I love, like, this one, I love watching movies and playing video games, you know? Like, just kind of, because you're kind of having, like, a one-sided conversation with someone. <laughs> This one, even, they, um, this is a post-crossing postcard where they just printed out, like, a ton of, like, general kind of stuff about them. I don't even know this person's name, because, you know, I guess for privacy reasons they didn't put it, but they just cut out, like, you know, probably, like, 50 of these on a, a sheet of letter paper and just taped them on to each postcard, so they don't, they're not even handwriting, like, the message. It's interesting. I would think that there's the beauty in the handwriting is like, <laughs> or like the, well, the, the good, part of the art form like, is, is handwriting a note, you know? <laughs> yeah. So like the good thing about postcards is that there's not much space. So the pressure is like really low. Like, you know, like, I feel like every time I send like a greeting card to someone, um, there's like so much empty space, like to write stuff on both sides that, uh, you know, I feel like I need to write something really important. Um, guys, sorry, my kids came back. <laughs> Darn, I guess I was talking too long. Um. <laughs> but I guess that's it. Uh, that's all I have to say. My um, kids, I'm sure you can hear them, so. That's okay, they probably go. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all of this. It's like really gives like, a lot of really fun ideas. And I'm, I'm excited thinking about like postcards. It's not something, like I thought about handwritten notes and like sending notes or cards to people, but postcards I feel like are, are so much more rare or just not as, um, not, they're just not received as often. So why not? Why not embrace it? I think that's so fun. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Lauren, for being with us. And we would love, I know your kids are there, so hopefully you can <laughs> you can share this, but we would love um, you to tell people where they can find you. And I know that you have some postcard packs that you're offering for Philicarta. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so you can find me at philicarta.com. And um, I made, uh, because of post-crossing, -cro I made like a Philadelphia postcard pack with like eight of the most popular like Philadelphia card designs and um, if you are going to do post crossing and you're from Philadelphia um, it's really easy way because like a lot of people like people ask for flags and definitely um, landmarks like popular landmarks and cityscapes are like uh, pretty commonly requested so um, if you want to check that out it's the uh, best of Philadelphia postcard pack and I'll give you a coupon code for free shipping too. Um, should I tell you it or like, would you just write it in the um, uh, both. show notes? Sure, yeah, you can. Okay, so you can use uh, the code send some love um, at Philicarta for free shipping on any order.
That's awesome. Thank you so much. It's generous of you to, to offer that. Um, and I love the idea of having like a Philly centric postcard pack because I know a lot of our listeners are from this area um, and a lot of our, ho our guests have been from the area too. So um, I think that's amazing. Um, so yeah, any other parting words, Lauren, for, for our audience? Um, no, I guess uh, um, I feel a lot of pressure to like get a lot done during the like this time like there's so much you can do and it's like almost overwhelming but I guess postcards are one thing that I've been very consistent about sending and I just I don't even have to go anywhere like sometimes I'll walk to the um, mailbox to mail them but usually I'll just leave them in my mailbox for the uh, mail person to pick up so it's like really easy to do and has been like making me feel happy. <laughs> yeah for sure i think it's one of those i, I keep calling it an art form because i think it is it's kind of like a lost art of uh, letter writing and postcard sending and i think it can add a lot of joy um to our days but also to the people who are who would receive them um so we really appreciate you walking us through how to do it. Um, and I know Lauren, when we were talking with Lauren about this episode, she was like, it's so simple to make a postcard. Everybody would know. And I'm like, Lauren, no, not everybody knows. It's actually really helpful to hear the like dimensions and just be reminded of this art form. Because again, I think unless you're on vacation and maybe picking up stuff at, you know, picking up postcards at um, rest stops, you may not ever really send one. It's not something that's done very commonly. So um, yeah, so thank you for sharing that and for, um, you know, sharing this art form again with people. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for being here. <laughs> well, we always end our episode with the same quote from Mary Oliver poem, which is, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? So um, I know for me, I'm excited to think about like how I can do the postcards and this episode actually also fits in really well with some of the lettering episodes that you'll um, and drawing episodes that we'll be offering so you can kind of incorporate it all into something that you send out there to maybe your family and friends that you can't see as much as you would like to in this time. So thank you everybody so much for being with us and we will see you in the next episode. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>